It's $10 billion. That's an unprecedented increase. Still not enough. When that was created, the first thing Peter Piat said, and said was that UNAIDS is an advocacy agency, pure and simple. And this was my first objective when I came into this job. And that was put it on the political agenda. He divested himself of all of the program aspects and the scientific aspects of, of, of AIDS. This is not a scientific issue. This is a matter of politics. Except one unit. He kept sort of the numbers unit. We are really uh, doing a major disservice to say it is uh, not as bad as it looks like, because actually it is much worse. One month after my interview with Dr. Piat, the Indian government slashed their estimates by nearly 60 percent. Shortly thereafter, UNAIDS acknowledged they'd been overestimating global HIV statistics for more than a decade. They've painted themselves into a corner, and now the, the, their house of numbers is falling apart. America is leading the fight against disease. And I call on you to double our initial commitment to fighting HIV AIDS by approving an additional $30 billion over the next five years. Noble corruption, misuse of statistics, in order to convince people that there's one hell of a problem out there, guys, and we've got to go and do something about it. If you look at the real world, you know, how many people are infected, diagnosed to be infected and uh, eligible for treatment. There are very few compared to the number. In April of 2008, Congress approved a $50 billion expenditure for AIDS treatment and prevention. The vast majority of the uh, world's population is not at any measurable risk of HIV infection. No measurable risk. Growing up in the age of AIDS, I was taught there were three certainties in life, death, taxes, and contracting HIV from unprotected sex. If you don't use a condom, there's a lot of chances that you can actually get the killer disease that is AIDS. I did a study of the heterosexual transmission of HIV in California, and we recruited individuals who were infected with HIV. Then we recruited their sexual partners, and we looked at whether transmission, in fact, had occurred. Padian runs a study, it's a 10-year study, with the world's most virulent, terrifying sexually trained... I mean, this thing jumps, excuse me, off of penises into vaginas miles away. How many of them do you think, after 10 years, with the world's most terrifying, virulent, sexually transmitted disease came up positive? Not nobody. Nobody. Nobody who was negative came up positive. Zero. I think HIV is more difficult to transmit than other sexually tra than a lot of probably most other sexually transmitted diseases. I mean, I think that's pretty widely known. If I were to have unprotected sex with somebody who is HIV positive, how many acts would I have to engage in before I got the virus? Just one. Just one. I assume one would be enough. First act. One is enough. Remarkably, HIV is a difficult infection to transmit. This contradicts everything I was ever taught about the sexual transmission of HIV. AIDS is the best example of what's really scary and alarming and dangerous about our culture right now, which is that it's a culture of, of PR. It's a public relations phenomenon. The truth doesn't matter. What matters is the image. If we were talking about reality, the reality is that AIDS is over. Somebody decided in the early 80s that there's this infection called HIV. And upon deciding that, I don't think it was debated enough. In 1983, Dr. Luc Montagnier and his team of researchers identified what they thought might be the cause of AIDS. I really was excited because we knew it was a new type of virus, not shown before in men, and very likely to be the cause of AIDS. Of course, at that time, we didn't have the full proof it was the cause of AIDS. 
and that initial work was rapidly reinforced by um, additional virology and serology studies in, in Bob Gallo's lab in Washington. Now we've got pushed by the Reagan administration that wanted to do something on AIDS finally. They literally told us to just close CDC's lab down. We, we don't care about it. There's a bunch of gays who gives a shit. I and mean, that was really their, their whole story. So the whole thing that they rested their political response was, well, we discovered the virus. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The probable cause of AIDS has been found. Credit must go to our eminent doctor, Robert Gallo, who directed the research that produced this discovery. What was new that day is for the first time we were saying, that's the cause, I'm sure. It was a silly press conference. There was not evidence then that HIV was the cause of AIDS. It wasn't called HIV. Uh, there was certainly evidence that he didn't discover it. It was discovered in France. The conference was held before any of Robert Gallo's papers were published. Therefore, before any other scientist had a chance to review them and uh, look at the evidence and see if he got it right or wrong. Gallo's philosophy was to have people to whom he would give the virus be in his own control so that any information that came out of that was, would come through him so that he got all the information. Indeed, often put his name on publications and would, quote, collaborate with them. But should you have any broader view other than his personal glory and your personal glory, it is, this was not a scientific pursuit in any way. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services decided from now on we are only going to fund AIDS research that assumes that Robert Gallo's virus is the cause. I didn't think that uh, HIV in 1984 was the cause of AIDS. That's why I did the study comparing gay men with Kaposi's and gay men with pneumocystis. I assume there must be something else. If you go read my paper from 1985 that Kern and Jaffe would not sign on to, I actually lay out the cofactor hypothesis in that paper. I'm a promoter of, of the role of cofactors uh, in uh, AIDS. Well, cofactors just says that the cause of a disease is uh, by more than one factor. Just simply being infected with HIV is not going to do it. You need certain cofactors. Cofactors are not necessary. Dr. Fauci would say HIV causes AIDS without the need for anything else. That's kind of ridiculous. The data that indicate that any different type of infection like mycoplasma or something like that is a necessary cofactor. I believe those theories have been debunked. What the fuck does he mean? Sorry. What's it, uh, sorry, the kind of, <laughs> what does he mean that there are no cofactors? Where's he coming from? There's cofactors for everything. Cofactor implies something specific. And it, and it really gets us off into tracks that are wandering. Gallo uh, is it gonna is it gonna change his mind? Well, he's probably 70 years plus now. He's gonna remember things. Yeah, you know, we all remember things that are good for us. But we forget the bad things. The cofactors are important to really understand how people get ill, why they get ill. What is asked of an AIDS journalist is to deny an existing reality, which is a strong, growing body of dissent on a scientific question. In August of um, 92, my dad had just read his latest National Review, and um, there was an article in there about Peter Duisberg, a maverick cell biologist. He said he didn't think HIV caused AIDS. To deny that this well-identified, well-characterized virus is linked with AIDS is, to my mind, just potty. He said, I can't replicate this in my office. I can't get this virus to do anything. We thought, oh my gosh, my dad is already daydreaming. He's trying to wish this all away because he knows how upset we are. Just, just wish it all away and you know, everybody will be gone happy. If Fauci would say, here's a billion dollar for alternative theories of AIDS, you wouldn't believe what's going to happen. A lot of HIV researchers overnight would find of, of, would start cofactors. The first year they would call them cofactors of HIV. 
and the next year the cold would be topped and HIV would be topped a year later. Peter is highly intelligent. He did excellent work. I mean, 